Toyota is copying Tesla's new unboxed modular manufacturing process, and they plan to include front and rear giga castings in future Toyota battery electric vehicles in an obvious attempt to try to catch up with Tesla. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Toyota recently introduced their new approach to battery electric vehicle manufacturing that includes a modular approach to vehicle assembly and the use of front and rear giga castings. Obviously, Toyota is borrowing these ideas from Tesla because on March 1st, at Tesla's Investor Day event, Tesla's new unboxed manufacturing strategy was introduced which once again involves a modular approach to vehicle manufacturing where various sub-assemblies of a vehicle are manufactured separately and then connected together at the end of the process. And this new strategy should be a much more efficient way to approach manufacturing and should help Tesla drastically reduce the cost of vehicle manufacturing for their next-gen vehicles. The fact that a well-respected vehicle manufacturer like Toyota is copying Tesla is to me a huge compliment to Tesla. This shows that Tesla is the new global leader of vehicle manufacturing when Toyota, who has been a leader in the past in vehicle manufacturing, is willing to copy a technology that they introduced. Toyota will apparently have a three-part modular structure, which will include a front, center, and rear assembly which, quote, allows work to be performed in an open environment, which improves work efficiency and productivity and reduces processes compared to work conventionally performed with people inside the frame. Once again, the benefits of this modular approach, they sound somewhat similar to what was described at Tesla's March 1st Investor Day event, where it was described that this new approach actually helped improve operator density in a factory and makes a factory much more efficient. It's actually really smart for Toyota to copy Tesla on this because this appears to be a huge innovation when it comes to vehicle manufacturing. And once again, the fact that Toyota is willing to copy Tesla really helps validate that Tesla is doing the right thing. Now, when it comes to the front and rear castings themselves, here's an image that Toyota shared in a press release. And you can see that these castings really don't appear to be as substantial as Tesla's castings. In addition, this press release specifically mentions Toyota replacing what used to be made with dozens of sheet metal parts with these new castings. On the flip side, in this image, you can see just how much more substantial the Tesla front and rear Giga casting appears to be. And this page from a Tesla investor presentation specifically compares the 171 pieces of metal that make up the Model 3 front and rear underbody structures, which are replaced by two large castings in the Model Y. So while Toyota's approach of using Giga castings is a good idea, it appears like Toyota's not replacing quite as much with Giga castings as Tesla is. Now, interestingly enough, Toyota does have some experience in casting metal pieces specifically when it comes to their engine manufacturing, and they mention that in this particular press release. So it will help that they're not completely new to the die cast process, but casting engine parts, I'm sure, is quite a bit different than casting structural pieces of a vehicle. I believe Toyota will be successful at it, but I believe it's going to be quite a while before they're able to do anything even close to what Tesla is doing right now. Beyond that, as Reuters recently reported, Tesla is actually working on a complete underbody, a one-piece complete underbody casting for their next-gen vehicle. In this Reuters article about this new Tesla casting, it's written, quote, in a bid to extend its lead, Tesla is closing in on an innovation that would allow it to die cast nearly all the complex underbody of an EV in one piece, rather than about 400 parts in a conventional car, the people said. Beyond Toyota's modular approach to manufacturing and their Giga castings, Toyota also plans to eliminate the conveyors that traditionally pull vehicles throughout the factory floor, and they actually plan for the cars themselves to be able to autonomously drive through the production areas as they get pieces added to them. And once again, this eliminates equipment or conveyors that are traditionally needed in a factory. And this should help Toyota lower the cost of setting up their next-gen factory. Toyota is also working on their next generation 
of batteries that are going to go into these vehicles. Toyota is also planning to have solid state batteries apparently in their electric vehicles sometime around 2027 or 2028. When it comes to Tesla and solid state batteries, I haven't seen any plans of Tesla to use solid state batteries and really this makes sense. They're really focused on innovations that they can actually benefit from right now. But Tesla buys a lot of batteries from manufacturers and when those manufacturers have solid state batteries ready to be able to sell, I have no doubt that Tesla will in the future use solid state batteries in their vehicles. But Tesla is showing that even with current battery technology, with great engineering, electric vehicles are extremely practical, especially when coupled with Tesla's supercharging network. When it comes to the volume of battery electric vehicles that Toyota hopes to manufacture in the future, in this Toyota press release it's written quote, we will expand our product lineup even before the introduction of the next generation BEVs with a set standard of 1.5 million units in 2026. So 1.5 million battery electric vehicles in 2026. That sounds great. However, that number should be far behind what Tesla should be doing in 2026. And even here in 2023, Tesla this year is actually aiming for 1.8 million electric vehicles being delivered this year. So Toyota's plans for 2026 are less than what Tesla should be doing this year. For comparison, according to Statista, Toyota globally sold around 10.48 million vehicles in 2022. So 1.5 million battery electric vehicle sales in 2026 would only be 14.3% of Toyota's total global sales in 2022. In addition, in 2026, the market for internal combustion engine vehicles will be smaller than it is today. So Toyota needs to get really aggressive really quick if they're going to stay relevant in the automotive market. Toyota's goal of 1.5 million battery electric vehicles in 2026 is a good start, but once again, it's not going to be enough for Toyota to maintain their status as one of the largest vehicle manufacturers in the world. Tesla, on the other hand, once again in 2023, is targeting around 1.8 million deliveries, and if Tesla grows 50% year over year, they could deliver well over 6 million battery electric vehicles globally in 2026. In addition, Tesla is aiming for a future when they actually make 20 million battery electric vehicles per year. So if Toyota plans to maintain relevance in the automotive space, they really need to pick up the pace. One other benefit that Tesla has over other auto manufacturers is the fact that Tesla has figured out how to very profitably manufacture battery electric vehicles. Other manufacturers are not able to do that right now. In fact, most of the legacy auto manufacturers are not making a profit on the battery electric vehicles that they are selling. So it's one thing for Toyota to manufacture 1.5 million battery electric vehicles, and it's a whole other thing for them to be profitable on that. So that's a huge advantage for Tesla. I do hope that Toyota is successful with their battery electric vehicle plans, but once again, I just wanted to kind of show the reality of the situation and just show what Tesla has done is not easy and manufacturing battery electric vehicles profitably is not as easy as Tesla makes it look. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.